Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Monkey Business. We're here today to talk about After Sun. I'm joined, as always, by Carter, Will, and this time with Joseph. How's it going, guys? Good. Doing pretty good, man. Oh, but great. it's good to be back. It's good to be back. It is good to be back. It's been a while. All right. So before we get going any further, Joseph, would you like to give us a synopsis of the movie? Maybe refresh I, our memories here. I would love to do that. Yes. All right. So memory burns. Sophie reflects on the shared joy and private melancholy of a holiday she took with her father 20 years earlier. Memories real and imagined fill the gaps between mini DVD footage as she tries to reconcile the father she knew with the man she didn't. And that is a synopsis of After Sun. Okay, so I, I guess for, for me, that kind of leads off right into my first question. Do you guys, did you guys think of any of this to be imagined? Is is that synopsis from the director or from like the movie itself? Or did somebody write that about it and it's assumed that some of this stuff is imagined? I had the exact yeah, I same question because I didn't think anything was imagined in my watch through of it it's not imagined as in it's imaginary it's imagined as in it's like like she's um, reimagining it it's a memory it's recollecting memories trying to um interpret them and see if that your view of memory is distorted or biased and trying to use the um the the little camcorder footage to find out what the real truth is i think but there's nothing imaginary about it no so, so would the moments where her dad is by himself then be imagined if this, since the story is told from Sophie's perspective? I think the story is partly co- told from Callum's perspective as well, though. But a lot of it okay. is ambiguous and sort of open to interpretation. Yeah. Um, especially another thing we'll talk about later. But yeah, I, I do think it's quite interesting that that's in the synopsis because you could maybe make a case for some of the early scenes with Callum, who's the dad, and Sophie, who's the daughter. Um, some of their like happy memories together, or some of those imagined. Who knows? Fair enough. I, I, so I, I guess I'll start then. I, to be completely honest, I was bored for a, re- a relatively large amount of the film. Right? It, it's relatively slow. There's not this crazy plot that goes on. And the movie takes a while for me to really get into it. I, th- I think I was past the hour mark before I really found myself becoming attached to the characters. But I will give the introduction to the movie uh, a 10 out of 10. I love the scene where it kind of sets forward the ages. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe you're given that Callum is Sophie's dad in the opening scene. He She just asks him, it's like, hey, you're you're 30 or you're 130 going on 131. When you were 11, what did you think I'd do? And you can do some quick math, right? So my first brain was like, oh, I, I assumed for the longest time, unless I really just missed at the very beginning them saying it, until they're at the pool table – and the and the two guys come over to play doubles with them. I thought that was just I was like, okay, I'm just gonna assume that this is like a brother sister. He's like t- taking care of her type of thing. Um, but just like the look in his eyes when he just doesn't answer her immediately was was just a really really good tone setter. Uh, it it kind of set the movie as this is gonna be based in reality. This is gonna be based in something that's a little closer to home for this particular character, even though you the viewer might not be able to relate to it so much. Um, but I, I really liked the intro thoughts or what would you guys think about it? And and to also revisit that scene later, I didn't think I was going to like it the second I kind of realized what was going on and it ended up being one of my favorite scenes in the movie. I think I'm, I, I understand what you're saying because I kind of watched the movie in two parts. Um, I watched like the first 45 minutes and uh, then like the next 45 minutes the next day. So like the first 45 minutes are like really heartwarming. Like, what a, what a great story. And then the last 45 minutes are like really heartbreaking and really shows you how much of a tragedy the whole story is. But as far as, just to clarify, Will, Callum is not 132, just in case you didn't catch that. You sounded a little confused. No, the... Oh, <laughs> um, I, I came into it knowing that it was about a father and a daughter. So I oh, okay. just assumed from the start. 
I did too, so I knew from the start. Really? Okay, I was kind completely of gave that away. blind. I, I didn't know anything Yeah. about the film at all. Which really kind of kept the mystery going for a little while. Um, until it's kind of there. And it's kind of awkward then for me in the way that the two boys have to quickly apologize. Like, oh man, I just... I thought that was brother too. And then you do the math of, oh, he was 19 um, when he when he became a dad. And so you can kind of understand his immediate gut reaction of like, oh, I didn't think I was going to be a dad. That's for sure. Um, type of at, le at least the way the body language kind of interpreted in reminiscing on the scene while watching it. Yeah, you could you could just tell right as soon as they like knew he was her dad, like they started like like behaving in like in a different way and you could just like tell by like the the energy he was giving off that like you could just tell that kind of hurt him in a way cuz like he doesn't want to be viewed as this this old guy cuz he's you know he's still like pretty young and trying to figure out his life and stuff. I do think one of the interesting things that the the film explores a good bit is how the dynamic between the father and daughter change as she grows up. And even just over the course of the few days of the events in the film, you see how much they're changing and how much um, they're sort of both looking back on the times that they used to have and the dynamic they used to have, and then exploring how that's changing as she's growing up and learning more about the world. and how that dynamic plays out between them as things change. Mm -hmm. I I think, or Carter, you haven't said much. Do you want to interject Go before for it. I go on with another point? Go for it. Okay, so I think about halfway through, and Warren, I do want to touch on, do, do you really view the beginning of the movie as heartwarming? Like, like, like as a really family kind of happy Well, not not once you know the scenario? ending. So should we... No, no, I mean, even viewing it, like, was your viewing experience through the first half heartwarming? Was it something that kind of made you like, go, oh, this is so nice, or no? Yeah, well, the, for, for the first 45 minutes without, like, unless you sort of know what's going to happen or really paying close attention to some of the context clues that they give you, um, it's just, you know, nice little weekend trip, the father trying to reconnect with his daughter and as the relationship changes, figuring out how to um, adapt to it with each other. But then should we explain what happens in the second half of the movie for the listeners? I guess, what do you mean by what happens in the second half? Because essentially the vacation just ends. Okay, well, let's go here. So the end of the movie, it's a little ambiguous, but it's heavily implied what happens. So they have this, this father and daughter, essentially the film is they go on this little weekend getaway. So the dad's divorced. And so he has, he's taking his daughter for this little weekend trip because Or, he doesn't get to see her that well, much. we don't know if they were ever married, Yeah, we though. don't know if they were married though. Okay. That's a good point. Um, and so the weekend starts off really fun. They're having a blast together. And then as the weekend goes on, you see more and more clues of sort of just how much Callum, the father is dealing with. and how much he's struggling, and how much emotional turmoil he's in. And then as the days go on, it you just see it more and more and more, and it's getting worse and worse. And then at the end, uh, well, at the end of the movie, it's revealed that sort of this, although it's, it's not completely one-to-one um, -one because there are some scenes of just Callum that Sophie couldn't have seen, but it's revealed at the end that most of the film we've been watching is adult Sophie watching these like family videos that she recorded on their camcorder. And so a lot of the film is this camcorder footage of child Sophie filming her and her dad's adventures on this trip. And then it's real at the end that it's adult Sophie watching it. Um, and then at the very end, it shows Callum in this hallway, it's sort of like an ominous hallway with dim lighting And the doors open at the end and he walks through it. And Warren, he's at an airport terminal. that's before. <laughs> no, that that that's where he's shutting the camcorder, Yeah, like, right? Isn't that where yeah, he's because filming it's also her at? an airport terminal. Yes. That's Yeah. also an airport tournament? Yeah, Yeah. it, I mean, it's, Yeah. it's, a, it's purposely an airport terminal because But that it's... was the last time they saw each other at the end of the vacation. Yeah. That was where they parted. It's kind of implied And so, that he kills himself. Yeah. Yes. I only... thought well it's like i was like dang this is depressing and then i saw 
um, a synopsis of it, and then the end that I was like reading it to see if I missed anything because why not? I'd already watched the movie, and it just says that it's implied that Callum kills himself, and I was like, well, I guess that makes sense with some of like the 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 death flags and stuff that are in it, where it kind of zooms in on the postcard that says "I love you, Sophie." Never forget that, and it's addressed before they've ever left. Um, and again, she has this camcorder that he that was kind of his. And just the the severe depression and anxiety and the emotional trauma that he's kind of dealing with. Um, yeah. So it's like, I can see it, but does anybody know if that's from the director that, that this is the implied ending or is it just open to, or has it always been open to speculation? So I saw someone say on, they said that like, maybe it's just that he left her life and just like thought he was, hurting her more than he was helping her so he just stopped seeing her but i think what fits the movie tone kind of tone of the movie more is that he killed himself okay at the end that's that was kind of my perception of it i think part of the point though is that it a lot of the stuff is meant to be somewhat ambiguous and can be interpreted in a couple different ways but definitely with Callum you see just how much she's struggling and there's that scene where he's just like bent over double just like completely breaking down crying and there's the little postcard or like he's going through old postcards that he sent to Sophie telling her how much he loves her and then kind of sparse throughout the film there are a few breaks to this weird dance sequence that turns out to be like the he joins this dance after he walks through the doors at the end um, which is the sort of implied ending that Joseph is talking about. Okay. Um, I'll be a little honest. When I first watched it, I was very tired, and the sequence is flashing so fast. I it's very hard time to try to tell what was going on. Am I, I think correct? That's the point though, I went back and right? watched these these sequences a second time. Am I correct? And that it's adult Sophie like screaming at and then like pleading with and then dancing with Callum is that an accurate is she interpretation screaming? yeah it's adult Sophie at this strobe light rave I don't think she was screaming but it's adult Sophie there just kind of watching him dance right well there's a yeah. cool there's well, a cool well, scene that's, young Sophie in the there's like a mirror between adult Sophie and Callum at this weird like strobe light rave thing and then child sophie she has like the last dance of the movie with with callum at the resort that they're at and they sort of mirror each other but i believe it starts with adult sophie like screaming at him and then like pleading with him and then she like runs up and hugs him and they start dancing and then it cuts to child sophie hugging him and dancing with him and it's a cool mirror two mirror images there and to will to answer about earlier um the director charlotte wells this is like you can tell it's very personal but it's also like most of the mm. stuff is based off like what actually happened with her and her dad i don't know oh, dang. about like if everything's like really like 100 percent. that's what happened but um it's, it's based off her life so oh okay jeepers um carter anything to add to this so far you've you've been a little quiet uh right now like, like, what have been your thoughts on the movie and stuff like that? You haven't talked a lot, man. Come on. I'm interested. I don't know. I don't have much to bring up in terms of, you know, bullet points to talk about, really. I think it was just, it's just a movie. I, I was never really bored. I never really saw it as happy vacation. I was waiting for something to happen. I enjoyed scenes individually, I think. Overall, I just... I didn't feel anything. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to feel and why I'm supposed to feel it. I, I, I guess there's a lot to be said about you know, uh, looking back on memories, and I I think that's a super interesting thing to tackle. But it it just didn't emotionally connect with me, really, okay. unfortunately. And I think I just don't understand this movie yet. I think I'm a couple watches away from really understanding it. Mm. That was that was one thing I was thinking like throughout the whole entire film. It's like I just I just don't get it yet. I'm just not I haven't not just seen it enough times, but like 
maybe thought about it enough maybe it hasn't just it hasn't really sunk in for me it's just it's just felt very i don't want to say it felt very shallow but it just felt very distant from me so i will say i i think the movie didn't really click for me until the second to last scene where you see adult sophie and you realize that it's her that's been watching these like camcorder videos the whole time and it, the realization sort of sinks in that this whole film that we've been watching it's adult sophie like looking back looking for the signs um that something is wrong with that like looking looking back and trying to figure out like could she have done anything different like what were the signs there and like she's looking back and just because as a kid you know she's how old is your character like 13 13 years old 11. or something and 11 11. She's 11 yeah yeah and so like all this stuff obviously goes over her head at the time she doesn't realize the significance of everything that's going on and this is her as an adult looking back and trying to figure out what happened or what she could have done differently or um and so i think that that part once that clicked it it made a lot more sense to me okay i i think the the major theme that i came away with um just kind of asking myself like what 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 do i observe here what's going on i i came away with the the very simple out of reach like every single thing these characters wanted to do really seemed to be just a hair's breadth out of reach. Like him moving back to Scotland was just a little bit out of reach. Her going up and uh, being in the uh, the gliders was just a little out of reach for her age. The goggles when he swims down are just a little out of reach. Just just his happiness, like they're at this wonderful place, but that happiness is just a little out of reach. The finances are a little out of reach. And, and just like everything is just there. It, it's observable, but not obtainable. And, and kind of in that, it, it kind of felt heartbreaking the whole way through of just like a dad who really wants to show his daughter to, to, to give his daughter the world, right? Like he, he was 19 when she was born and, and now he's 30 and it's just that gut wrenching thing of, I wanted to be a provider and Sophie can tell it too, right? When she says like, stop, or it's like, stop doing that. It's like doing what he's like, um saying, you'll saying you'll pay for things when I know you have no money. Or just even when she said the one line of, it's like, you know, it's, what is it? It's like, it's just like a weight or like a sinking feeling or something. And it's like, I don't know. It's okay. Or the image of her dad just with his, um, uh, with his cast over the bucket and she's reading the magazine and the book in the chair. And you just have the shot of one on one side and the other, and there's light on one side and darkness on the other. And there's, there's like, it's not an incredibly unique shot, but it, it is a shot that conveys the message of they're, they're just they're just out of reach of communicating they're just out of reach of connecting he's just out of reach of actually apologizing and she's just out of reach of forgiving him and 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 i just i don't know that was kind of the message that i got from the movie is everything is just a little a, a, the teeniest bit away from the characters and, and they just can't get there if, even if they want it so bad and then when they do get some things it can't save real problems uh she gets the um the all-inclusive band right cures all the money but they're still not really happy it's like them dancing at the end can't bring back the fact that he didn't um join her for the uh uh for, for the karaoke scene which was the most heartbreaking scene in the movie for me. And it's like the whole group singing happy birthday can't bring him a little bit closer to actually enjoying the day. It's like doing what is it? What were the books? It was, I think it was uh, how to be aware about being aware. It was how to meditate. Uh, and it was Tai Chi. And then there's, there's one other one. It's the four books that are by the TV. When Sophie is asking him, like, what did you want to do when you, when you were my age and stuff like that. And so and even the rug he buys is like 850 um, pounds or whatever, right? And and e even that doesn't really bring him fulfillment when he puts his feet on it. And it's like it tells a story, but it doesn't tell his story, so it's not good enough. And then and then the daughter knowing that the parents aren't all right, he's like, "Why do you say I love you?" Or it's like, "When's the last time you saw your grandma?" Or like, "What was your 11th birthday like?" And, and it's just like she wants to know her dad, and he wants to know his daughter. But I felt as though he doesn't really want her to know a lie, but he doesn't know how to convey the truth. And that's equally as heartbreaking uh, of just out of reach of a genuine connection. So, yeah, that, that was kind of my overall theme. Thoughts? Am I? Well, I'm glad you brought up the, the scene where he's taking off his cast. Like he's in the bathroom trying to cut through this like wrist cast because he had sprained or broken his wrist or something. Mm -hmm. And so if he's in the other room reading magazine. And I think that's one of the first scenes where you just see 
him be going through something and trying to hide it from his daughter because mm. he cuts he cuts his arm and like his arm's bleeding and she like keeps asking questions and he's just trying to play it off like he's fine and never tells her and i think that's kind of the first inkling we get and then as the movie goes on we see more and more of these scenes where he's going through just i mean so much internal strife but he's trying to hide it and act like he's okay but i think one of the most heartbreaking things is that these two characters they genuinely love each other so much but in the end that doesn't stop the ending from happening because like you look at what's the last thing Callum does he buys that rug that you were talking about and we see it in the adult Sophie it's in her bedroom um in her house 20 years later that's like the last thing he did was buy Sophie this rug that she picked out this really expensive rug that she liked yeah and I think just to kind of go back on what on what Carter was saying earlier about not getting it on first watch on on my first watch i i loved it but um i i i like i loved how it looked i loved everything about it but i didn't really feel everything that needed to be felt on on first watch and it wasn't really until my my fourth watch of this that fourth watch oh i've seen it five times um and went until my fourth watch i was like just just realize how how impactful it was for me and how just like it's it's become like my my favorite movie like ever it's high praise so so what made you really want to to give it the rewatches and and carter i I guess same for you what what is it about a movie that you didn't really emotionally connect with though that makes you want to watch it again if it sticks with you in your mind really Mm -hmm. just that goes for anything if i like it if i don't like it if I'm neutral, it's just, if it's forgettable and it's just, there's nothing special there that you feel, then it's going to just sink away and you're not going to give it any of your, you know, attention. But if it's something that just has like one little piece of it that kind of just, you know, hammers away at you and you're thinking about it a little bit more, you might give it a rewatch. But, um... It, it may happen for this. I just, I, I don't know. I, again, like I, like I, I liked how it was shot. I, I like it. I really like it in theory. I think Will, what you said is, is, is great about it. All that, um, about how you can go through like everything and everything is just, um, just a, just out of reach. I, I really do get that people emotionally connect with this. It's just something that I didn't really. That's, that's fair. Yeah, well, I think the thing that that makes me want to rewatch it is because it it never fails to make me feel. Even if I've already seen it like three, four times, it it I'm always feeling something when I'm watching it. Mm-hmm. Throughout the whole thing, like scene by scene, or is not, it just... not the first time, but every time after that. Yeah. Okay. Is it because you know the ending? After the first watch, yes, yeah, because I know the ending. Okay, and that's like what people say it's like oh the ending recontextualizes the whole movie and I mean yes absolutely it does technically but like it didn't really add to like it didn't add to the emotion for me at least I just kind of said okay that, that makes sense everything is you know from the camcorder and then the dad passes away and this is her trying to understand her dad it's like I that doesn't really give me any more emotion than I already had, which was, you know, very little. So not really sure what to say. Or is is there a film not not to be like this is a worse version of or anything like that, but is there a film that you think conveys these types of emotions or this type of a theme in a way that you really connected with? Or or is this overall concept of trying to discover someone who you thought you knew um not something that really interests you in terms of a plot line. No, it's not the concept. Any concept can be done well, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think this was done well. I'm not going to say that. I just think it just doesn't. There's just it. It wasn't on my wavelength emotionally because of it, like I, I've been really trying to pin this down. Why? And I I just don't know. I just didn't feel anything. I think it's just a lot of lingering shots on him doing ninja moves or trying to dance. And she's unaware. I think there's you know, like the scene with the cast that Warren brought up is great. That's a um a little a very good microcosm of the entire film. 
where he's trying to hold something back from her and still maintain his his aura of you know that he's a um a loving father which he is and he's just trying to hold back his sadness and his pain in terms of similar movies i'd think about that that's i don't know because it's a pretty unique movie i think In terms of similar movies, uh, from this year, Scrapper, I don't okay like it as much as, as After Sun, but it's a lot of like the same dynamic and vibes as After Sun. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Um, Because, uh, yeah, so that's I like was just father asking. daughter father daughter stuff you're saying, or like father Yeah. kid stuff. Okay, I'll let me think about that. Because for me, I know one of the times I know that a movie has not necessarily failed me or maybe I failed to connect to a movie is when I start thinking about other movies that do the thing the movie that, that I'm watching is trying to do. So I didn't know if that had happened uh, during this viewing. Just just asking. No, yeah, we've talked about this before that when like a movie. reminds you of other movies you think a little bit less of it Mm right you said hmm mm hmm i like when i can connect movies to each other while watching them i i like them more usually usually um i don't want to say that is a blanket statement when i see something really good in a movie that reminds me of something else in a really good movie then i like that a lot more when i see something bad done in a movie that's done better elsewhere then obviously i like it less Okay. but as i said this is a very unique movie And I really didn't draw any connections to anything else during it. I it's just not a it wasn't really a relationship, a father daughter relationship that I ever really really bought into. Okay. I think that um what's the actress's name? Uh, Frankie Corio, I think Frankie this Corio, was, yeah. yeah. This She was like was she wasn't an actress before this at all. yeah, it one of those a new one that's awesome she did phenomenal she's so good in this film i i think she outacts paul mescal honestly who's just kind of Yeah, standing around yeah. looking sad I, I i get that he's like that's his, his character he's not He supposed just to be this he give conveys a big performance the he conveys the tone of the movie just like so well though. maybe i think the tone is just in the story and direction and i think it's conveyed very very well i just I think he's just there delivering lines. I don't know. Like maybe that's what is the emotional core of it. You're supposed to see the movie through um, Sophie's point of view, and you're supposed to feel the movie through um, Calum's point of view. And I just didn't feel anything because I, I, I didn't connect with him really. And it's not because like I've never been depressed or anything. It's not because I've never like bought a rug and had not made it me happy or anything. Like it's just I just didn't. It just No, didn't no, connect not with me. not at I don't all. know. Yeah. I think you can totally get an emotion you've never really felt from a movie. Or, or like I think you can get an emotion uh you've never experienced before in your life from watching a movie about said emotion. Um Yeah. Absolutely. I I don't I don't think that you have to experience something in order to connect with it. Um it helps sometimes because like like again, me with I'll make it quick, everything everywhere all at once, it helped because of me and my mom's relationship. But like I don't think you need that in order to enjoy the movie quite a bit. I will say just real quickly in terms of similar movies, um, it has a lot of similarities to my favorite movie of last year. Don't make me go. Although I would say the, the like themes and takeaways of the movie are very different, but I think that's sort of what drew me into the movie at first is that it, it felt very similar at first, but I've got a question for you guys. Why do you think it's called after sun? Why choose I was going that to ask title? that too. Joseph, do you have an answer for this? Given that you've seen it five times, or do you want to go last? Think, and should we give our answers first? Uh, I I don't really have an answer for this. I mean, they're Really? out in the sun a lot. Yeah, They are? they like they talk about sunburn and sunscreen, right? And they talk about sharing the same sky. Yeah, But I, that that's the line. I think it's I nice think that that's we share the the same line sky. because she can't share the same sky with him if he's dead now, right? I was like that, that that was kind of the line where I went back after reading the synopsis and went, I think that's what it's trying to convey is Yeah. that the sunset, they can't look at the same sky. She's alone now in terms of where her dad is. Yeah, because But she okay, says, because the sun set on their relationship. yeah, the sun set, it's yeah, it's like it's done now. And so that that's what child Sophie would have interpreted uh, her dad's death with if he indeed died in closely after um, this, which is. Again, I wouldn't imagine it would be long after. Either he left her life after this, or he 
passed away after the film. He's I, so. I really, really don't buy into the fact that he left her life. I think he's okay. I think he's passed away. Either just, you know, killed himself or he's maybe he's just passed away. Okay. But I don't think the movie mm-hmm. even works if I don't think it works if he just passes alive. away though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't well, think it was. Just it, was a freak it could work if he passes away. But yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. true she's yeah. like, she's like, she. Th- I think about the fact that we can both see the sun. So even though we're not actually in the same place and we're not actually together, we kind of are in a way. So then, if he kills himself, they're not actually together in that way anymore. She said. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I kind of I agree with that. So I'll throw an idea out there. The the main thing that I could come up with why I thought it was called After Sun is throughout the film, all of the joyous moments and even some, like, not that they're all joyful, but like all of the joyful moments pretty much are during the daytime. And the nighttime is when Callum's going through the hardest struggles. And that's when he has these dreams of the the dancing sequence that we get to at the end. And that's when we see him break down sobbing on his bed. And that's when he just loses it and runs into the ocean. And that's when like he's alone by himself and struggling the most is after the sun has gone down. Um, that was sort of my takeaway, but I'm not sure. Good catch. Yeah. I didn't notice that. That's. I, I would say though that they do have the last dance, which is a good memory. And they also have the bread throwing thing but Mm -hmm. i don't i don't know if it would be enough to counteract uh what you're talking about really yeah that's it's that that, that's good that's good oh warren um you're the solo location lover guy right yeah how how do you think this this, does this film count as that for you or not really or did do you think it added to it i wouldn't say it was really single location because they're like you know, they're at the resort. They're on the water. They're at they go. All they're at a whole place. bunch of different places. Yeah. I guess the closest would maybe be like their their room, but that's not really. There are only a couple of scenes in there. Do you like you like single location like thrillers? You said or like at least where they can like really use the location to its full extent, and they kind of stay there for most of the film, right? Okay. Is that what you mean when you say that, Warren? Is that think, what you meant? Maybe you said that, and then Will's just misinterpreted it oh, for the past. I, I think I just, weeks. I I like single Classic location movies day. in general because it forces you so much to focus on the characters and like what the characters are doing. There's less distractions and less goose chases the director can go on trying to throw all sorts of stuff in there instead of just focusing on the core of the story. Cool. I will say one father son movie just to take a side step real quick yeah. that i absolutely love that makes me cry every time is unbreakable that's a movie with uh bruce willis that's about his father and his son and it's it's honestly kind of thematically similar in that he's just he, i would say that he's depressed with bruce willis in that movie as david dunn and he's just really isn't sure where to go in his life he's gonna go through a divorce He's struggling to connect with his son, and over the the film, um, he meets Wait. Samuel L. Jackson's character, and yeah. Is is this the movie that starts off the trilogy from? Uh, it is, yes. It's Emily Shalons. Okay, yeah, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure I was thinking of the right movie. All right. Yeah. So yeah, and then um, he kind of reconnects with his son over the course of that movie. Okay. Incredible, incredible one. Love that movie. I think Michael really likes that movie. Yeah, Michael's a big. That's why I never watched it. <laughs> it. It's been a long time since I've seen it because I saw it probably 2004, 2005, like with my cousin or something. I think it's that old. It's 2000. Oh, 2000, I think. Yeah. yeah, I pulled it up. So it's like I, I okay. oh, as a kid, I wouldn't really remember the gravitas of such a film, but might might be worth the rewatch then. Great movie. I'd love to podcast about it. It's a good one. Maybe. Maybe an option if we have time. It's a possibility. Always a possibility, man. But as long as it doesn't get away the cup of Kung Fu Panda stuff, right? Yeah, very true. Yeah, yeah. Very true, very true, very true. Oh, I cannot wait for the yeah. Kung Fu Panda rewatch. I still nope. haven't I I'm ex- I haven't seen the third movie yet, so I'm gonna wait till I do the rewatch to watch it. Nice. 
I oh it's February now. I was going to wait till February to rewatch them, but wait, when does the fourth one come out? Because it's pretty in soon, the, right? In March. the wise words, March. Okay, in the wise words of Kirk Cousins. There's much wisdom to be gained from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> Your cousin said that? <laughs> he said that. No, no way, dude. What a guy. I love him. What a guy. Captain Kirk. <laughs> but, okay, so, yeah, I just think it was... I just, I just think it was great how this is a directorial debut. I think it's 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 so impressive how how just just personal it is. You can really tell that it's it's something that she really um like it's really personal to her and it just just really reflects on, on the story so well and like Carter was saying, Frankie Corio gives the greatest child performance that I've ever seen. Um and it's so impressive how she just she just like hasn't acted before this. Like she was just a kid and then she got cast into this this role and then she's just I think she's gonna have a an amazing career ahead of her. Uh, she's in some stuff coming out, yeah, maybe or this year, I guess. But um, and yeah, I just think, I just think the choice to cast Paul Mescal, Mescal was just amazing because I don't, I really don't think anyone could have done the role that well, like played that character in the way that he did. I don't think putting substituting any other actor would have made it better and and i think he just he just portrays the the mood and tone just just so well and once you know the ending you kind of just start to to pick up on on the tones as you rewatch and yeah the shots the shots are just so so beautiful and they just capture the mood of the film so well and not to distract from your point, because I agree that I think he was awesome in this, but how do you pronounce Paul? What's his, how do you pronounce his last name? Because every time Mescal. I go to try to pronounce it, I pronounce it a different I, way. I used to think it was Mescal, and then I heard him say his own name, and it's pronounced Mescal. Mescal? Yeah. Okay. Because he's Irish, right? So it's Mescal. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's an Irish guy. <laughs> oh, you know, I was just watching The Irishman the other day. <laughs> you were? Funny enough, I wasn't, man. <laughs> oh, I, I like to tease well about how often he brings that up. Gotta uh, love good movies, man. It's brought up once a podcast, even if it's not by Will. Once is on the white side. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I kind of thought that the the casting felt of the Irishman or this of of this film We're like, off the Irishman <laughs> like uh, casting was it it was good but it felt kind of generic I, I felt like as long as the person was an unknown rel- a relatively unknown actor or actress I thought that the role could have been done by a lot of people i guess i i, I didn't really done, feel but i don't think it would have been the same at all i think i'm with joseph on this i thought the two lead actors were really really good in this yeah like you can't I think he just... this with other actors yeah i think i think it was cast well i think he has the look mm-hmm. of the i think he's got the look down like the person yeah, trying to the look of a young portray. father and trey yeah i guess i just it didn't really the actors didn't really grab me i think the daughter give a better performance than the father but i think he was very good too okay all right so i've got a question for you guys something mm-hmm. that confused me and joseph since you've seen it five times you could probably answer much better than than i could through right, my right, don't, don't put expectations <laughs> here you have to say first so the scene that it shows a couple times throughout the movie and at the end of like this dance brave thing that he's at with like the strobe lighting that maybe sort of represents death um what is that scene what did you guys take it to represent because i sort of came up with like a few options and i couldn't really decide which one i thought made the most sense so do you think it's callum's internal struggle with how sophie will react if he goes through with what he's thinking about do you think it's adult sophie's struggle with wishing that 
Callum had made different decisions. Do you think it's just sort of an abstract representation of the emotional turmoil that they're both going through or all three of them, none of them? How did, how did you take that when you watched it? I, I would just say, I, I, I don't really have an answer for that. I would just say it's, that that scene is just a feeling that you you have to feel like i don't really know how to describe it but i think it's it's it was really really impactful but like it's it's just the feeling that it gives i don't really know how to describe what it means but you, you just feel it okay that that makes sense to me cuz that's all i got from it i'm not really good at taking abstract things like that and linking them to like what they actually thematically represent on a, on a literal like textual sense. So I just kind of viewed it as a framing device. It was just an interesting way to show um, Sophie throughout the years kind of, you know, looking across the room at her father and it's, you know, this, pitch black room and a rave it's strobe lights you know it's very artsy it's very um simple but it it's um unique enough that it, it really grabs your attention and so i i think i'm with joseph and that really i think it's just something you're supposed to feel and supposed to not really think about and try to connect to a point that the movie's making it's just it's just there. The fact that he goes back into it at the end could mean something, but I'm I'm not really sure. I think that's just kind of how it is with like the whole movie. Obviously, there's a point to be made with it, but like you you really just have to feel the entire movie to really love it. I'd kind of go with, especially with the end scene, uh, seeing how it's paired with under pressure. Um, great choice. As, great choice. As I, I thought, the the what is it? The, a few songs were really on the nose. Under Pressure, Unchained Melody, and Losing My Religion. I thought were three really good song choices. They're, they're very on the nose, um, but I thought that it was very fine for this movie. You know, with Under Pressure, it just sounds like, this is our last. Like, like this is it. And so yeah, like, I kind of felt as dance. though, like, she's maybe searching for one more dance with her dad, no matter how crazy, how panicky, how how out there it is it's just like just just one more dance so that that's kind of the way i i took it throughout the rest of the movie i wasn't entirely sure though it was just the final one where you get more paired with under pressure um and and kind of the lyrics with it that are that are the the focal um audio source for for that entire um scene it it just felt like she, she she'll fight to get one more dance but she can't have it because what does she want to do in the moment? She doesn't want to. Um, just like he didn't want a karaoke um, to Losing My Religion. And the, the lyrics to that, even though she can't sing that well, hurts a bit. And then right before that, listen to Unchained Melody. And he's looking at all of these other couples, or like the older couple, that something, again, he can't have. Um, so, so I thought pairing a, a dancing environment with the music uh, alongside of it just kind of evoked a little bit of panic and loneliness but but not not panic in like the anxiety way just de uh, de desperation i guess is more of the word i'm looking for than panic to just to just kind of reach out one more time for the impossible i do think that's one of the cool things about about a movie like this is like we all had vastly different takeaways from just that one scene and that really frames how you see the movie very differently based on how we understood that scene that's pretty cool because it is a movie, I think that, I think it is meant to be somewhat ambiguous, so you can have different takeaways and view it in different, different contexts based on how you understand that. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing that was like the most heartbreaking in this in this movie for me was because like you you can tell he's he's just constantly trying to find his his inner peace and stability, and he just he just can't, you know, like he he has all these books on on meditation and and Tai Chi, and he, you can see in the, in the scene where he's standing on the rail, you know, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yep. You can tell he's like, that was his way of like, he try, he's like doing his meditation and his breathing and stuff, and and you can tell that like, he doesn't really care if he falls in a way. Yeah, there's even early in the, early in the film, there's a, even right at the beginning, 
there's like a bus coming through and he walks like dangerously close to the bus and doesn't even seem to like worry or have much care about that and you just see early on like the these seeds being planted yeah and, and that's why i think that that um he that's why i i think that he did kill himself in the end because you know, this is just what it was pointing to i feel like all the signs yeah um about that and about the the songs i'll get to but i think like for every moment that this film has that's like great i and like as i hear you guys talk about it more and explain your thoughts and how it's connected to you i like it more and i i appreciate it and respect it more it's just as i said it's like i i just didn't feel anything unfortunately like i i really wanted to but i like there were plenty of moments in this movie that just I kind of felt we're a little trite with all his like, I mean, it's cool. Like she likes to sing and he likes to dance and he's always like dancing, doing, you know, trying to embarrass her and stuff. He's doing his ninja moves or like meditating or stuff. It's like Tai Chi. He's doing yeah, tai, chi. tai Chi. I know. And like he's I on the railing. I kept saying ninja stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's what she calls it when she's that's, in the phone booth. Oh, okay, yeah. She's okay. like, he's doing his ninja booth. He's so embarrassing. Uh-huh. Well, like he does it at when, you know, she's in the phone booth and then. Like in like one of the first scenes when they get to the um the hotel and the the camera she goes to sleep and the camera drifts over her and holds and he's you know doing that and like out on the deck and like then he's standing on the rail. I just thought that was just like goofy. I didn't. It just I didn't buy it. I don't know. Like I I don't know. I just didn't. Again, like it that. It goes back to like I really connected with her character a good amount, and I didn't I didn't emotionally connect with him at all. Um, the scene where they go to like the edge of the mountain and they they do the together, even I just I didn't feel anything. I thought it was like I I don't know. It's like okay, they're you know they're they're doing their yoga on on the overlooking the cliff. It's a great shot. It's the the movie is very very well shot, but it's it's just you know drawn out shots after drawn out shots where it you know kind of turns a little bit and then it zooms in holds on it for like two minutes at a time and i just it just loses the emotion on the way for me unfortunately i think uh, i think kung fu panda is a great great movie about finding your inner peace though so i'm very excited to get to those oh so so real quick i like the scene where they're doing tai chi on top of the mountain because of the sign that's placed to the right of them which is just we know the perfect place and it's like again you can be exactly where people say happiness is supposed to be and feel none of it. And, and they're there. They're at the perfect place. And so this is, again, another place where I really felt the out of reach come into play. It's just like they're right there. They're exactly where everybody is telling them you can go to be happy, and it's just out of reach. Joe? Mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say, I think my – like the the, the dance – this is our last dance under pressure scene is, is my favorite scene, but, but also a really, a really great one was the, the one where they're, they're out on the water on like that, that raft or, or little dock thing out there. Mm -hmm. And he just, he's just talking about, it. he's like, you know, whatever, whatever you do in your life, you know, like drugs, you take boys, you, you, you meet with, you can tell me all about it. I don't care. And, and you can just really tell they're like, he he really is struggling with like getting older and and he just he wants to be this young free guy again and like he just he he wants to be there for her and just like be relatable and you can tell it just like it's breaking his heart that he like he he can't really be free mm -hmm. anymore. I think it also hints at that when he's talking with like the younger couple and he like tells him that he's 31 or whatever and then he's like yeah i can't even imagine myself at 40 it's mm -hmm. hard for him to even picture you know 10 years down the line mm -hmm. or nine years down down the road which is quite tragic in and of itself yeah and like that's a one really good thing the film does because like at any age you are it's hard to imagine yourself 10 years in the future you know it's not easy but it does give it a new meaning considering the context of the film and considering that he he, he probably did kill himself mm -hmm. so good good subtext and undertone there um i was gonna say about the the use of music um 
it, it really had me thinking at the end because I I really liked um I totally forgot what the first song that I'm thinking of I I wasn't a fan of but then I really liked the um the two karaoke songs the Unchained Melody and um Losing My Religion mm -hmm. that was probably my favorite scene in the movie where she's trying to get him to go up and then he um he doesn't want to at heartbreaking as will said and then she goes up and just sings her heart out to you know losing my religion by rem and then at the end where they do where they play under pressure um man that dance scene i just like everyone everyone talks about how like emotional it is how it's the emotional you know crux of the movie like that's that's the big moment and i just didn't feel anything and i know that's like i'm a broken record at this point but it's like i just I don't get it. And they intercut between the rave and the the dance scene where they're together and they're dancing together and it's a, a good moment. But it's just, I don't know, the, the camera felt chaotic and close up and swirling around them and I just didn't I didn't think the song conveyed the emotion that I I wanted out of it. And one thing is like, I, I'm not a big Queen fan, but I do really like um, the two songs that were sung during karaoke. I like R.E.M. A, a good bit. And so I, it, it made me like reconsider, like, did I like those scenes because I like the songs? or And did I not like the one scene because I don't like that song? And that's that's a that's a big, big tripping hazard that a lot of movies fall into. They just play a song that people like and they they use that to kind of paint over, a, you know, they use that as, you know, emotional icing when there's no cake. I will say though, for for the under pressure though, I I had never heard that part of under pressure that was like did this as a last dance. That's not what I knew the song from before that. So I don't think they're just like chewy because I feel like those are like popular songs, but like for this generation, like not many people know them. Like okay, you don't have you don't have to call us I've, old I've like that. Just... No, no, no. I've heard under pressure. I just I. And I've, I'm sure I've heard the whole thing. I just didn't recognize that last part. Okay, you didn't recognize that. Play that. As Under Pressure until, like, yeah, until after I watched it. Um. So so one thing in terms of, because we kind of come back to this whole, when does the emotional part kick in, or if, if it even does kick in. For me, the, the only, or when it really started to kick in was when I realized the movie was going to be over soon. Um. Not necessarily any of the particular character scenes it, it was when i realized oh wait his life isn't getting better this vacation isn't getting better their relationship is only covered up by a few things and there's only 30 minutes left of screen time two-thirds of the movie is gone and it just isn't getting better and that's kind of where i started to hurt for the characters a little bit it's like nothing's gonna save the day here that like like, like there is no there's no sunshine there, there's no like there is no big character reveal because the movie hasn't set you up for anything like that. It doesn't it 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 doesn't set forward any cheesy expectations or or anything other than what you're given. But but I really started to to have a heart and to hurt for the characters. And I think talking about the movie has made me like the movie more to be completely honest. Was it at um, that point that you realized it was a tragedy? I think I knew it was a tragedy. I just didn't know why I wasn't invested in the strategy until about an hour, an hour 10. And I'm kind of, I've got the movie up here on the other screen um, to kind of pull it up and watch everything. And it's really, it's really when Callum uh, goes in the swim in the ocean is, is where I really go, this isn't getting better. Let, like he's doing this in solitude. So his daughter's not really going to know about it. Um, if he it, like, I was like, this is either going to cut to him. Okay. But no explanation of how he got back or it's cutting to like a, a police station. Like it, it's one of two options are going to happen here, but that's not until an hour eight, and the movie is roughly one thirty six before credits, one thirty, one thirty five. So, so there's not a lot of screen time left, and and that's really where I started to realize it's going to end, and it's not going to like nothing's going to get solved, and I think that's really where the emotional kick kind of kind of got to me. Of these are just. This is just the lives of the characters. Um, th this this isn't some salvation story. This isn't some the some rogue action is going to create salvation or anything. Like this is just 
a slice a, a slice of a tragic life and and so for me the the time that the movie was it, it being so short in this day and age at an hour 30 roughly hour 35 kind of put that just just kind of ache there um to kind of go mm. oh man it's it's done and and I guess that's kind of like exactly what the movie might want you to say, not to be like, oh, look at this. I, I did what the movie wanted me to do. But that's also what Sophie's doing, right? She can only watch so much of the footage of her dad and her, and and then it's done. It's like, it's like there, there's nothing after the end credits. And another thing, I loved the way the end credits rolled, where where it's just um, white on one side. And then typically in movies, right, I'm trained to see something in the boxes on the right or the left of the credits and i was like okay well there's nothing maybe, maybe with the next name and it's nothing and it's nothing and it's nothing and it's nothing for it might be like 30 seconds or something like that and i kind of like skipped forward to be like is there anything that i'm gonna miss like is there any marvel end credit scene kind of cringe but maybe and it's not and it's just he walks through the door and it's like hey you know that thing where there's supposed to be a future memory or, or like a future revelation there's nothing here and and so i think that's also where the final impact of the film kind of wrapped up of just like, oh, it's done. Yeah. Done. <laughs> Thoughts? Or am I just crazy? Will discovers in credits for the first time. <laughs> Marvel movie. No, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Carter already briefly touched on this, but before we do ratings, do you want to everyone say their favorite scene real quick? Um, okay. What was your favorite scene, Joseph? Uh, my favorite scene. I mean, it's generic, but um, it, it was the the under pressure dance at the end. But apart from that, it was like I said before, the scene where they're out on that that dock or, or like boat out there floating, and they're just they're just talking about you know, Callum was talking about you can you can talk to me about anything, and yeah, that was, and I think that was the same scene where she's like. I think it's nice that we share the same sky. I'm pretty sure that was the same scene. And I, that that nice we share the same sky monologue was just, or not monologue, but dialogue was just in, incredible because now they can't share the same sky and, and all she can see of her dad is, is on this, it was recorded. So yeah, that was my favorite scene and second favorite scene. Cool. One more. What's your What's your top three? Ready? One more scene. Oh, um, I think it's the beginning. I think it's the intro scene. I think that's my third favorite. How about you, Will? The The first scene I really liked is the overhead shot of her playing water polo. I don't know why. I just like that scene a lot. She's like, so, so, so. We're like, move, 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 move. And like, she never gets the ball. Like, and it's just, she's surrounded by these older people. I don't know why. I just really liked it. Just a kid trying to do what's, what her dad wants to do to help with the fun. And it's, it's just, nothing happens. She's getting ignored. She's kind of getting pushed to the side or no one trusts her. I, I don't know. I just, I just liked the overhead where she's turning and doing this or she can't swim and, and nothing's happening. And then I, I really liked the ending, like the ending, ending, uh, the absolute final shot of the film where he just closes the camcorder and walks out thought it was great um and then if i had to pick um another scene i I think and carter already touched on it but but i i don't like watching awkward scenes in movies because in in my my third uh like third party awkward or whatever the heck you want to call it third person awkward nature will kick in but the karaoke scene is it's awkward and and it feels brutal um but it very memorable. So I'd say those those were my top three. I think the karaoke scene was also probably my favorite scene. Either that or the scene where she organizes all the people on this tour to sing like sing to her dad for his birthday. Because in both those scenes, like you know how much he loves Sophie and how much he wants to join her for karaoke and how much he should be enjoying that she's gotten all these people to sing for his birthday, but he can just see on his face how much it pains him that he just, he literally cannot. 
uh, he can barely even smile when they're singing for his birthday because he's just in so much pain and so much internal struggle. I think those those are my two favorite scenes just because of it's sort of the um the pinnacle of everything that the movie's been building towards. Cardi? Oh wait, is that two or three? No, I just did two. Yeah, did you three? Sorry. Gotta pick a third one. Carter made the rules. <laughs> I was just saying for Joseph, I wanted to give him more opportunity to talk. Carter, did you that? say that your That's favorite sweet. scene was the karaoke scene? Is that what you said? Yeah, where she sings. I like that one. Um, I also like pretty much any scene where she's interacting with the older kids. I hmm. liked her trying to be more, um, you know, a little, little more, not really grown up, but you know, an older kid trying to fit in, trying to hang with them, playing pool. They, that was cool. Again, because I just I was really invested in in her story and wasn't so much in his, I guess. So, the water polo was great. That was also a very, you know, a really really just real representation of a kid younger jumping in with the older kids, not really getting the ball, just kind of feeling like they're just taking up space in the pool and not getting to participate even though they want to. So it was good. All right. Shall we move to ratings? Carter first. <laughs> and then uh, Joseph last. <laughs> We're somewhere in the middle. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Me first? Okay. Um, uh, I just, I'm starting to hate rating movies, really. I don't want to rate this. I Carter just... brings this up every time. Guys, I hate I know, but I don't <laughs> like it. I just, like, I just don't like assigning a number to an experience like this, where I can appreciate so much about it, and a lot of things I really like, and yet there are certain things that just bring it down, and ultimately what brings it down is I don't have an emotional connection to it. So it's hard to put a rating on that but if i if i had to it'd be like it'd be a six almost a seven but probably a six so like a six with two thumbs up so yes. like a six and a half <laughs> sure i'd recommend it but it's not for me yet okay cool warren all right so i will say i was sort of on the fence between two numbers i will say just real quickly um, if you do watch this movie, it definitely deals with some very heavy things. So just, I know this is sort of cliche, but just reminder to, if you're listening to this, just take a few minutes and, you know, send, send someone a text, call someone, you know, just go out of the Parents. way. That one little step could be a, make a big difference. But, um, I was on the fence between eight and nine for this. Joseph's convinced me I'm going to go to a nine. Yes. Nice. Nice. Well cool. done. Well done. All right. I will. I will say I actually came into the podcast ready to give it a six. Um, I was just like, it, it's cool. It's got some stuff, but I will, I will no more higher. Then as we started talking, I moved it to a seven, but I think I'm ending on an eight. Although Carter, I, I, I would personally, I don't think I'd recommend it to a lot of people. Um, mm-hmm. I, I will recommend it to my mom and I'll probably do a second viewing, hopefully with her. Um, Cause Miss Cord, shout out to you. Love you, mom. Shout um, out to Cord. Uh, and I think I'd like watch it with her and like want to talk about it with her. But I think it the movie is a lot of fun to talk about. And I think it will kind of live in my head for a little while. Uh, and I do also think it would definitely make me cry on a on a rewatch, um, k- kind of knowing the helplessness of the character. So I think an, an eight with the definite possibility of going upwards as well. Joseph? Okay. I mean, I think we already know where this is going, but... Um... <laughs> It's, it's a 10 out of 10 for me and that's not anything i say lightly because i've only given i think six six movies ever a 10 out of 10 but um then this is one of them and this is my favorite um out of all of those so and you know it might change opinions change but i, I don't think my love for this will ever change um it's just it's just it's it's so good it's so good um and yeah, I, I I would recommend this to. I I wouldn't say everyone, but I I think to most people because I I don't think it's one that's really. It it could be viewed as boring if you only watch like, 
Like if if say the average person only watches five movies a year, then it, it could be viewed as boring. But like I think to most people, I I would recommend it, and I think they would um be able to enjoy it or not enjoy it. But I think they would be able to to watch it and and experience it well. And I think um you know you the great thing about film is is you resonate. with what you resonate with and and you don't when you don't and you don't have to feel bad about it so you know just you rate what you rate and and it can change but yeah that's just that's how it is i think it's one of the great things about film Absolutely. Fully agree. Yeah. Not much else to add except for, yeah, I would, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it to everyone, but yeah, I, I, I'm with Joseph there. Like, I, I think it's, a lot of people are going to take a lot away from it. And I think that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad they can. If anybody has anything else or Carter, do you want to send us out? I'll send Oh, us out wait, before we go before out, I, can I uh, read a comment that a listener has left for us? Just, just Yes. real quick, quick. Oh, Is okay. it bark, 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 woof, 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 <laughs> woof? Yes, it is. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, sorry to steal your thunder, Warren. Wait, who's that? Is that just a random person? No, I think it's Will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was indeed Will. nice. Love that guy. Shout out to Will. Shout Shout out out to to Will. Will. Shout out Sorry Will. to undermine you, Warren, but yeah. <laughs> Appreciate appreciate Has Will the lessons, seen Absolute Will. Fun? Small Will? I don't think so, no. Carter, would you do the would you do us the honors? Yeah. Hot Summer Nights, too. That's one we can do at any time that we feel like it, so On the hot summer maybe night. we'll maybe we'll jump on that to knock that out. Or maybe not. I think I feel Joe's like is right. that I think Saturday we have to wait until we summer. gotta wait on the hot summer. Do we have to wait till summer? Dude, We're gonna I'm wait not a whole I'm year. not watching the movie again. <laughs> I, I'm yeah. not doing it. Like Honestly. I remember it, Yeah. but Yeah, I'm not definitely like not fondly. either. So This we is what can I will start, say, though. but I'm not I'm not watching it again. <laughs> He, he said, like, the music in it's great, and I wasn't really paying attention at the first time. So I'm going to have to review the music. I don't know if I'll, I probably won't watch it again, but I'll review the music. All right, dude. That love that man. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Until next time, we're the monkeys, and talking about movies is our business. Bark, bark, woof, woof.